the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Do you agree with that statement or not? Let me know in the comments below. And we're going to be discussing that in today's video. That statement of the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. I heard that in a therapy session one time and I didn't agree with it at first, but I actually, in retrospect, I do because the way it shows up for me time and time again, the way I do one thing in my life is the way I do everything in my life for for the most part. <laughs> so um, hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a life coach and um, we're going to be talking about, I help people get unstuck in their lives um, so that they can live their best, most meaningful life. And um, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, share it with a friend if you find value in it, and leave me a comment down below um, if you agree with me or not. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything, for the most part. Okay, so we're going to get straight into the video. Um, it is more of a casual style than me talking at you upstairs in my bedroom. Um, today wound up being a great day to film because my husband is out of the house. He's at work at the office. He usually works from home. So um, it was just, I'm so excited because I have a chance to talk. I mentioned in my holiday party survival guide for introverts and extroverts that I was a huge introvert, but, and that's true, but um, I like being, I like having like a day where it's quiet and it's peaceful and it's just me and my dogs and my plants and um, I can actually talk like nobody's talking at me it's just me talking so that doesn't always turn out well for me though in videos because I tend to ramble a lot so the way you do one thing is the way you do everything so let's get into that I had to write these down so I don't because I have recorded this a couple times and I keep forgetting so I'm looking down at what they are even though I know them I know what they are there's three things there's consistency for me that's how I show up. I'm a very consistent person. I, another thing that is true for me is I am a perfectionist and I don't say that as a great thing. It's not like it's, it is a flaw, but it does help me dig deep because I like things done well and done to my standard and in a person, in a perfectionistic kind of way. And it's not, necessarily healthy but it helps me and it's a part of who I am it helps me get through my day sometimes um, running three businesses I run a plant shop which I'm going to show you some of when we discuss consistency um, um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to show you for perfectionism but the last the last thing is addictive passion <laughs> So there's passion and then there's addictive passion and I'll show you that too. Um, again, it's not really, passion is a great thing, but when you do it, sometimes on the level that I tend to like to go to, it can be very overwhelming. So just know that. But those are my three things that I would point to as the way I do one thing is the way I do pretty much everything in my life. Um, consistency. I show up and I try and I try and I try. And where does that come from? It comes from being an athlete. Um, I was a professional ballroom dancer for 20 years. Um, no, not 20 years, sorry, 10 years, but I danced for God, close to 20 years. So that builds any kind of athletics builds consistency. It doesn't matter what kind of athletic athletic endeavor you're pursuing. It builds consistency because it builds repetition. So showing up and doing that has made me a very consistent person. And I show up for pretty much everything in my life that way. Perfectionism is something else I could link to dance. It, um, you <laughs> you pretty much have to be you have to approach something like dance with teachers approach it this way you have to approach it with an attitude of perfectionism so that everything is perfect when you go out there on your performance day because that's usually the goal and 
say dance is performance sports would be showing up at um whatever your game is sorry i'm not great although i can talk about athletics i am not great at talking about uh team sports <laughs> okay and then the last thing is addictive passion and um what does that mean so <laughs> it can really passion is just being like super excited about something wanting to really get to know all about it that's how it looks like for me and the addictive part is taking it to a point where it can be extreme um so let me show you pretty much those three things in just one aspect of my life. So I'm going to show you some footage of my um, plants that I grow from my plant business. This is not to sell plants. It's just to give you an example. And it's probably prettier than just a talking head, which I said I wasn't going to be. And I've been standing in a corner for five minutes, six minutes, and I've been a talking head. So... <laughs> So I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn you around. Actually, I'll show you what you're going to be seeing, really seeing. This is my living room, and these are some of my plants that I grow for my plant shop. So hold on, let me turn you around, and then you'll have a different perspective. One second. Okay, so this is one area of my plant shop. Excuse me. And... I'm not doing this again to sell you plants. I just wanted to use it as an example because plants, how do you not kill a plant? Or how do you grow this many plants? The, the phrase, oh, you must have a green thumb is garbage <laughs> because it's not having a green thumb. It's building consistency with taking care of your plants or plant and learning how to care for them. I grow a couple of different kinds of plants. I grow carnivorous plants, orchids. There's an orchid. I have some terrariums. I grow hoyas, philodendrons. Uh, I don't have any down here, but um, some mon monsteras. So those are basically what you're looking at in this frame right here. And to show up for all these plants, plus all of the other plants that I own in my shop requires consistency. I have a specific watering schedule and fertilizing schedule that I can, that I schedule out, sorry about the noise, to um, show up and keep these plants alive so that they don't die. <laughs> because all this stock, if I didn't show up for it over and over and over again, will die. If I don't keep it alive, if I don't learn about it, learn how to water, fertilize it, care for these plants, know what kind of um, medium they're potted in, how they grow, what kind of conditions they grow in, it's consistency. It's not having a green thumb. Now, this started with, hmm, let's take this plant as an example. It started with an orchid, one orchid. It wasn't this orchid, but it doesn't really matter. So this one plant <laughs> and this learning how to care for this one plant helped me build consistency because I was able to learn, let me take you around the side. A mini phalaenopsis um, orchid, like the grocery store orchid that everybody kills, right? I wanted to learn how to not kill orchids, so I started with orchids and um, I learned about what they grow in. So, like, if you brought me a orchid from a grocery store, I could tell you that you are not an orchid killer, and I, <laughs> I like to hand letter that a lot. I'll show you that on my. Uh, um, I'll put a screenshot of something I lettered that says you are hand lettered that says you are not an orchid killer because it's true. You need to learn how to care for an orchid and 
that's different than just, oh, I can't keep this orchid alive. You are not an orchid killer if you can learn how to take care of an orchid, build consistency so that you can show up for that orchid and then eventually expand your plant collection, let's say. So here is my plant collection, part of it. <laughs> so this is what I would call probably addictive passion. <laughs> and let me show you some more plants because that's getting a little boring for me to look at. So here's some more plants. Here's another area of my grow shelf. And none of this is me selling you plants. It's just me showing you, let me zoom you in, showing you how many plants I have that are alive. And yes, I lose plants, but not as much. Like I am, most of these up here are, these are some orchids. Those are orchids and some carnivorous plants. But orchids are pretty, pretty known for being hard to kill or, you know, killable. And if you learn about an orchid and how to care for it, you won't kill it. <laughs> the chances of that will lessen if you take time to learn about it and apply it to, in this case, plants. So addictive passion means for me, these are some cuttings, propagation, so they're not as pretty. What it means for me is jumping in, but in a really passionate, driven way. Um, I tend to be that way on kind of an extreme level. Just I think it's it comes again from being a a dancer. That's where it comes from. It's shown up in so many areas, like owning three businesses, having two YouTube channels, which is, I consider that one business, having this coaching um, business, the life coaching business, and also running a plant shop and an online plant shop where I mail plants. So, and that's also where, so that's pretty extreme, right? Three businesses. But this all fits well into my life. The YouTube channel, I love it. I find that I want to be consistent with it every week and I'm learning learning more and more about YouTube just the same way I dove in and learned a lot about plants and experimented with them and that probably comes from perfectionism. definitely from perfectionism because why do one thing perfectly when you could do you could try to make everything perfect and actually I have a better example for perfectionism but addictive passion consistency those are two things that are required if you want to run any kind of business, definitely consistency, but addictive passion isn't necessary, but passion is. You have to be interested, educated, knowledgeable about what you're selling or, you know, whatever business you're running. Or if you don't own a business, then you need to be at the top of your craft, which you'll hear me talk a lot about in the store. And on the life coaching channel, being at the top of your craft or building mastery. And where does that come from? It comes from consistency. It comes from, for me, it comes from my dance background. I tell you to practice, do something over and over and over so that you can build consistency and get to the top of your craft. I think I say that in almost all of my videos because it's true and it's the how I show up. It's how I do one thing in my life is how I do pretty much everything. So I build consistency. I dive in with what I term as addictive passion, but you could also just term it as call it passion. 
I build consistency and I keep forgetting the third one. Oh, perfectionism. Yeah, that's probably my weakest point. That and the addictive part. So let me turn you around and we'll talk a little bit more about um, perfectionism and addictive passion. So hold on one second. Let me turn you back around. You're going to see me next. <laughs> Hi. Okay, I'm back. So addictive passion and perfectionism. So let's apply that to an office job. So I had an office job. I worked in real estate for a very long time. Um, let's see, what did I want to say about that? <laughs> Um, here's what I wanted to say about that. It, um, where I worked, I worked at a law firm. So I worked at a title company for, uh, doing like, um, title work for real estate closing. So basically making a mistake was not allowed. It was not a good thing because it could potentially cost whatever, whatever company I was working for, whether it be a law firm or a title company, it could cost them a lot of money. If a claim title claim came back to haunt them, it would be something that the insurance company would have to pay out, the title insurance company. Or if it's a law firm, if we made a mistake um, in whatever kind of case you file, that could come back to haunt you. So <laughs> what, I'm, what I haven't said yet is I used to get at one of the jobs that I had, um, and actually in multiple jobs, there's this idea of keeping track of your errors. So keeping track of the mistakes you make. And I worked in this toxic setting where I would get a spreadsheet <laughs> every month of the mistakes that I'd made, the mistakes that I made on every file. And let me tell you that this comes from a place of perfectionism because the people that manage want you to be perfect. And I took it personally when I would get those mistakes because I was passionate about what I was doing I loved what I did, even though I didn't love getting, you know, a notification of all the mistakes that I made. And here's what happened in one case. So I got written up for making too many mistakes one month. So, and it came out of the blue, like this wasn't in the job description, like you need to be perfect, but um, it came up and my manager wrote me up for, um, making too many mistakes and I was I had only been there like for a year and I was in a law firm and it was new to me so let's give you something prettier to look at in the background <laughs> so she came to me my manager and she said here's a list of all the mistakes you made um, we're writing you up if you don't improve then you'll get written up again and it could ultimately be led lead to you being fired so it put me in a very reactive state and also a proactive one, but I was reactive because it, it was hard for me to take in the fact that I was new at what I was doing and I had made some mistakes. I was insulted, but I also really wanted to please. I wanted to be perfect. And what I did was um, I was able to reverse the situation where I had the next month... Um, I didn't make, because my manager was tracking me because she was probably looking, not looking to write me up, but she was, you know, she was monitoring my performance. So anytime I had a question, I would go to her and say, what's the answer to this question? And because I didn't want mistakes to come back, trackable mistakes, stupid mistakes. So I had one month where... I made no errors in that I was tracked for in the type of work I was doing at this law firm. So that comes from perfectionism. It comes from dance, from 
having to have your performance be perfect or as close to perfect as possible but it also has come from other areas of my life like working at that law firm or just working in real estate in general or working in an environment where your mistakes are tracked your errors are logged and it shows up and it's like you get the notification of all the errors you've made and it can make it you could turn it into you know trying to be more perfect you could accept the mistakes or you could try and be you can try and get over them by being trying to be even more perfect and that's a that's hard because it makes you kind of paranoid. I'll give you another view. <laughs> so the way you do one thing the way, is the way you do everything. Yeah, you've seen consistency. I've talked about perfectionism, and I, am, I try to do that in all my businesses and everywhere that I show up. I try. I'm a beginner this year at a lot of stuff, so I being at the top of my craft like I was in dance, and then stopping dancing because I don't dance anymore, but um, being new in these other areas that I've started, being a new business owner, starting on YouTube, starting anew, is hard. It's hard for my perfectionistic tendencies because I want to do this stuff at the top of my game, but I can't because I don't have the skills yet. I'm brand new to making videos, to talking in front of a camera. Um, it doesn't mean I'm new to presenting information because as a when I was a dance teacher, a ballroom dance instructor, I would teach classes to like, you know, maybe a group of like a hundred people. And being even though I'm an introvert, like we talked about in the creative not the creative, um, in the survival guide for introverts at the holidays and extroverts, the holiday survival guide. I told you I was an introvert. And I completely lost my train of thought there. So so, yeah, but being, I can be up in front of a group of people and it does not bother me. So being in front of the camera isn't my favorite place to be, but I can do it. I can show up and be in front of the camera. I'm here right now talking to you, but it's not at the level that I want it to be. I would like this to be so much better, but I had to take, to get on, to figure out how to even enter the YouTube realm, I had to take a course on, not had to, I chose to take a course so that I could enter it with at least some knowledge and it wasn't just me throwing up random videos. So I had some idea of how to kind of like niche down and what to talk about specifically. So yeah so the way you do one thing is the way you do everything now let's talk about addictive passion a little bit and let me try walking <laughs> i am not used to vlogging like i said so this casual um style is just very different for me okay so we were gonna talk about uh addictive passion what does that look like so for me, <laughs> and I know I talked about it with the plants because I bought like one plant and then I bought a whole bunch of other plants like I showed you out, whoops, never mind. I showed you out there and I have more upstairs and downstairs in my basement. I have more upstairs in my um, house, my uh, spare bedroom in my house. <laughs> So addictive passion for me came from the sports area, from dancing, from um, just, I love dancing and I want to be like the best. And yeah, it's perfectionism, but it goes deeper than that. It's like an addiction. And I'm going to share with you what happened to me. So I got... I tend to be addicted to movement because I danced for such a long time and then I stopped. I tried things to get movement back into my life that was not dance, that wasn't a passion I was addicted to and left me completely feeling unfulfilled when I stopped. Like I didn't know what to do with myself. And what did I do? I started running. I started running. I ran a half marathon and then I trained for a full marathon and then I started training for triathlons and I did sprint and Olympic. I bought all of the gear, all of the stuff to deep, to dive deep 
and like th- everything and it, if you don't know what that is then I apologize but um so yeah triathlons and then that led to cycling like distance cycling and doing like tours and then that led to hot yoga and being pretty intense with that so and then that led to working out with more like a trainer so changing the style but still working out really intensely and the way I do one thing is the way I do everything um with dance especially I struggle with um having an eating disorder so because I get so addicted and so passionate it shows up in my life in kind of extreme ways and I it was it was what it's what gets me through things like it got me through the COVID pandemic because I was having a very hard time and there it showed up as me going to the gym I love to lift weights and I love to work my body into the ground just to where I'm sore the next day and I equate the soreness with I worked hard I showed up and I did it perfectly and I did it over and over again I was doing weight weight workouts that were way too long way too much weight for my self at my age now um I should have probably been going easier and I didn't but I dove into it because it's how I do pretty much everything in my life I dive in with consistency addictive passion and perfectionism and what happened was I hurt my back I first I hurt my upper back and then because I wasn't just weightlifting for a couple of hours at a time I would go stretch because I like to dance I would go stretch for like probably at least a half an hour 45 minutes afterwards um so my time at the gym for one day was usually about three hours two and a half to three hours and then I would come home and I would use my foam roller and um just to get the knots out so that was even more time um spent trying to recover from the workout and yeah I hurt my more plants (laughs) I hurt my lower back and the pain has been with me what I did to deal with COVID was to work out and that's caused me um, trouble with um, exercise bulimia in the past working out so much it's how I work out my frustrations and um, some terrariums there (laughs) so yeah the way you do one thing is the way you do everything I showed up as exercise bulimia in the past and this time it showed up as a back injury so um yeah I've had chronic lower back pain since February actually it started at the end of January 2021 so I've had a steroid shot for it one steroid shot and it didn't work so I'm going back for another one at the very end of November so probably this video will be posted the day before I go in for my second steroid shot because I cannot usually I've never had problems big problems with injuries and now I find myself to the point where I have chronic pain every day I stretch I foam roll I haven't been able to work out as much as I would like. I've tried physical therapy. I've tried everything and it is so frustrating. But even there again, even with the therapy, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything or that's my view anyway. So I think that's why I run three businesses. Why um, I have two YouTube channels because I get really interested in it and I dive in but I don't dive in at a surface level I go deep because that's who I am I'm intense I'm focused I like to build consistency and repetition I like to do it in a perfectionistic way I think I know when I taught dance I used to come off because people would tell me this like you're like a drill sergeant and it was true and how I treat it's how I treat myself and 
it's not necessarily healthy. It's not healthy at all. Walking around with this freaking back pain stinks. I just, I hate it. I hate that I have an injury that I can't foam roll or massage or do anything to get rid of it. Like, it's just not going away. And it, it frustrates me so much because, like I said, there's nothing I can do about it. So it's November now, and the pain started back at the end of January of 2021 this year. And it's November 2021, and it's still there. So, whew. so yeah. So, and then trying to run the businesses, especially the plant businesses, the plant business, because this requires like watering, uh, lugging heavy bottles of water. I've had to ask for help. I've had to ask my husband for help to carry the plants up and down the stairs because I like I don't want to injure my back further and I need help and asking for help is something I stink at. I'm I hate asking for help because I am a perfectionist and I just don't like asking other people for help. I like to do it on my own. And those aren't necessarily good things, but they make me who I am and they make they make it possible for me to dig deep when my back is hurting and I just want to quit. Um, doing things like long distance races taught me grit and so did, it taught me how to dig deep. Even though I wasn't very good, doing things like a marathon for seven hours, digging through pain, you meet yourself there. If you do something like that, like a long distance race, I promise you will do one thing the way you do everything in your training and you'll also find, you'll find a lot of grit and inner strength. And I think that's important. And if I had to pick a fourth point, it would be resiliency for me. Um, any of these characteristics have taught me to be extremely resilient in my life. So that's my bonus point for you, is that you can learn things from other areas of your life for how you show up in your life resiliency for me shows up I'm able to bounce back and keep going and keep trying new things even though I don't feel comfortable and even though I will try to perfect them and I will try to be addictively passionate about them those aren't necessarily bad qualities they're good qualities but and they build resilience because if something doesn't work out if one of these plants dies it's okay it's okay it, it bothers me if something dies, but it is okay because I can either get another one and regrow it or I can take it as a loss and learn from it. So I wanted to just share with you those things. Um, I hope that this was a little bit more fun. <laughs> you're seeing in the background, we're in my kitchen, uh, you're seeing some propagation boxes and propagation cups, pots, plastic cups that I pot in. There's some art that I've done. And I'm just babbling now. So I will leave you, but I really hope that you enjoyed exploring my story with me today. Um, I know talking about it is really helpful for me. And I know that somebody out there can find value and relate to my story. So yeah, how do you, let me know in the comments, how do you show up is you in the world? Is the one thing you do, the way you do one thing, is it the way that you do everything in your life or pretty close to it? Because I find that those three to four things, the resiliency, the addictive passion, the perfectionism, and the consistency is pretty much how I show up. It's me. And the way I do those things it's a constant theme through my life so let me know in the comments if you can relate or you agree and let me know like what what are your traits what are the things that make you you so and those sometimes those are things that can help you get stuck in your life and knowing them can help you get unstuck because you can be aware and you can either try and accept it like me with my perfectionism I I accept it and I know it's a part of me I know it's a flaw and I can work on changing it or tweaking it um, I can work on changing it 
and tweaking it even though it's probably not something I'll ever be able to just get rid of. I can accept that it's a part of me and I can learn better how to channel that and channel it when I need to and take it, try and take it out of the equation when it's not serving me best. So, okay. Um, if you liked this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Um, what else am I supposed to say? <laughs> um, oh, I'm supposed to send you to my website. So according to this class that I took. So um, if you enjoyed today's video, you want to get unstuck in your life, figure out how to live your best, most meaningful life, then um, I'll leave my a link to my calendar so that you can schedule a time to meet with me at sarahdaltoncoaching.com or leave me a comment in the comment section below this video. and Or you can email me at sarah at sarahdaltoncoaching.com and we can keep having the conversation there. And if you did enjoy today's video, then you'll probably wanna check out this video here on how to live your best creative life. Or this video here on the holiday survival guide for extroverts and introverts. Bye.